follow-up video. Here I am a few days later after the previous footage and uh, it has rained on the road one time. I'm coming back on a Sunday. I was here Thursday and I'm back on Sunday and uh, got a surprise um, but also here checking out the road to see how it's holding up and do any follow-up that may be needed and so far it looks really good. It's, really good. it's actually harder than I thought it would be. I thought there would be some ruts coming back but uh, as of right now it's still in good shape. So still some soft spots with some ruts that are uh, forming, but overall it's uh, packing better just because the super big and heavy trucks aren't digging it down to the foundation. But uh, still got to get through the repacking of this over a period of time and I have to come back out and blade it again and uh, keep working on it. Hey folks, Aaron here at Otter Creek Farm. Uh, back out here on Sunday, I was here Thursday and did the... Uh, uh, worked on the main road and did the video on the small uh, back blade that I borrowed from a neighbor. Well, seeing that and kind of thinking through a couple things that I had on order with everything attachments, uh, I decided to go ahead and cancel one of the, actually the back blade, I'm sorry, not the back blade, the, uh, the landscape rake with everything attachments. And uh, with that money, I was able to buy two admittedly lesser uh, implements. Uh, one being a landscape rake and then the other being a seven foot uh, back blade So I was able to get two implements immediately for the price of one Landscape rake from everything attachments. Uh, I'm a weekend warrior So I don't need top-of-the-line stuff and I'd rather have two implements that I could get now versus a 10 to 13 week uh, back order with everything attachments uh, And so I can get to work because I, I don't have my shipping container in here my second one and uh, the pole barn area uh, needs to be uh, finished graded. So I opted to cancel my uh, that one implement with everything attachments, which I you know I know it's a better product, but uh, I then got these two attractor supply. And I'll go over these. You know, a lot of you guys out there like me, you're here on weekends or doing light work or limited work. I'm not uh, you know I do some work around for others, but the majority of that work is light duty. And where I need it most. Uh, you know, I have a heavy brush cutter in the bottom of light. That's as heavy as you can buy, uh, you know, right up there with a brown tree cutter. So uh, I've got heavy where I need heavy, and I've got implements now that I can put to immediate use. So today is going to be about uh, getting these things unloaded by myself. They're in a trailer. I'll spin you around. Let's see. So uh, today is about getting these unloaded. Uh, I'll just use the tractor and lift them out. And then before I even get started, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grind a uh, grind a spot on there where I can weld a uh, a trailer tongue hand crank. And uh, I've put those on the shipping container. Uh, I bought extras by accident, so I've got them. And these are almost impossible to deal with if you don't have a stand. A part of the cost savings on these is the simple fact that they don't have a stand to stand them up, make it easy to uh, hook and unhook, and they're not that light, so taking uh, you know an hour or two to get those things welded up now is going to be worth my time and then I'll probably get out and use the landscape rake first I want to get camp raked I'm tired of looking at roots and all this debris laying around here it just bugs me I like things in nice neat order so I'm gonna do that and then coming in on the uh, the road out there uh, you know it started to get some of the ruts back you know we've had some rain last night the sands in really good condition to move and then get it back in the ruts that have reformed and uh, get it repacking as people continue to use it. So um, stay tuned and we'll go ahead and get this stuff out of the trailer and underway. It was kind of sad this morning. I uh, found a baby fawn dead in the road. No signs of trauma. Uh, you know, maybe just died of exposure in the harsh conditions of the storm last night. I can imagine uh, the fawn was probably no more than a week old, you know, very small. I'll post a picture of it. Uh, and, you know, the, the storm we had last night could have been just simply too much for it. But, you know, that's nature. Nature will take care of it too, clean it up. I just moved it off the road. It died right in the middle of the road. So I moved it off the road and uh, I'm sure 
the uh, turtles and the coyotes and the vultures will have it cleaned up pretty quick. Yeah, the first one it went very smooth because of gains. I'm going to try to repeat that process here. Okay, so the plan is to mount this to this. Now this is way overkill. This is, has a uh, 5,000 pound lifting capacity, but like I said, I have extra of these. So I wanna get something down here that's permanent, heavy duty and convenient. And I've got these handy. Uh, these are at Harbor Freight for like 30, 35 bucks. So you take this piece out, uh, you weld this to your item, and then you use the pin to either mount it in the vertical position, or you can use the other holes and it'll be sitting up like this. I think the best mounting spot's gonna be right in this area right here. So this will lean up in here, something just like this, and that won't affect the, uh, the lower arms. And then you unpin it, rotate it down, sits like that, makes it easy to load and store. All right, I'm on the second one now. Got the area prepped. I didn't take off any more paint than I needed to. I'm just gonna be around the edge where I'm welding. And I also ground down the edge of the ring. As you may not be able to see, but I wanted to make sure I had a good clean surface to weld that. So now, that's all I need. I'll get that tacked in place. And we are ready to go. It's a long tack, but the metal's cold, and I found that it just as the metal heats up, it just welds better as anybody will tell you. So, pretty good weld, good starter. Don't need a ton of strength in this, obviously, just holding up the weight of the stand, so uh, it's more about making it look good. Uh, and then I'll get it ground up and painted, and we're done. That looks good, good enough, certainly for what we're doing. I'm just gonna paint it, and we are done. This little project, we get on to using them. All right, here's what it'll look like when it's cleaned up, but we all know that's just gonna get scratched off, so just a little rust inhibitor, especially on the weld, no big deal. Over here, this is what it looks like, or will look like towards the end as a finished product. Oh, there we go. That's letting it out. Prop it up. Turn it. 
turn it down that way and you can see how it sits on there nice and out of the way the hooks are on the outside of that and it looks like we could go another two inches before it gets in the way but this will be a lot more convenient for the life of the implement so i'm glad i had it spent a couple hours getting it welded up getting it done so we can move on to other projects all right we're all hooked up not too bad got a little bit of play in the uh, top arm still not as long as i would like those pets quick connects just extended out so much that it changes the geometry of the top link but uh we're going to take it down the main road do another pass clean up a little bit from the ruts that were created since thursday and see how this bigger blade works What a landscape rake can do for you. It really dresses it up nicely. Came out here. It actually uh, acts a little bit like a box blade in that it does uh, some leveling, especially if the soil is really dry. So for taking out the small ruts that are formed when it's wet, you know, I went over all this and uh, it, it's a lot smoother than it was because the sand is dry right now. So, uh, this smoothed out. It's not going to be as good as box blade. It's just never going to happen. But uh, it does, you can take ripples out. It can fill in some small ruts, things like that. So, I found the landscape break to be very useful. And uh, we'll see what happens with the bigger uh, back blade. Stay tuned. So, so far, the seven foot box blade has been working uh, significantly better than the short one for a variety of reasons that I've mentioned. Uh, an eight footer would be better on a category two tractor because you can reach out farther from the sides. So if you're looking, go for the eight if you're in question. Um, on this uh, county line unit, what I may do is weld some uh, steel to the back of it to stiffen it up a little bit just to make sure that it doesn't bend uh, with a category two tractor. I'm not over taxing it. I don't have a complete, you know, I'm burying it under the dirt, uh, but I am, uh, you know, cutting a, I don't want to say a ditch, but I'm changing the shape of the road overall, trying to move the dirt back in the middle and eventually get a crown on it. If I do this uh, a couple hundred times, probably that's what I'll do. But uh, for now, I'm just moving dirt towards the middle and then or from the sides towards the middle. And I'll come back down the middle and do a couple quick passes since I'm about done for the day and uh, head out, so spin around until we got back. See with this angle, I'm getting a nice shape on the edges. Getting rid of the little berm along the sides, pulling the dirt back towards the middle. Uh, unfortunately, this road has squashed out over, over the years and never been really maintained well. So it's way wider than it should be. You can see the sugar sand is starting to form already. That becomes the next problem. But uh, all I can do is solve one problem at a time. 